You are listening to Stories from Palestine podcast. My name is Crystal and I am your host. I live in Palestine with my Palestinian husband and children. Every week on Monday, you can listen to a new episode of Stories from Palestine. In this episode, I would like to share what we have recently learned during our tour guide studies at the Bethlehem Bible College. Because recently we have discussed the many different names of the city of Jerusalem throughout the history. Now, to the Arab world and to the Palestinians who live there, Jerusalem is known as Al-Quds. And to the Jewish people who live here and around the world, it is known as Yerushalayim. And most other people in the world probably call it Jerusalem in English or something in their own language that sounds similar. Now, the city of Jerusalem has a long history and it dates back to the Copper Age, that is more than 4,000 years ago. The Copper Age is the time in which the inhabitants of this land were using copper tools. And then later they were using bronze tools and then even later iron tools. So when during excavations they find a lot of these tools, then that's the different periods that they are named after. The Copper Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. And during the Copper Age, there was a small settlement near to a spring called the Gihon Spring. Now, when we speak about settlement these days, we are usually referring to Israeli settlements in the West Bank, which are built on Palestinian land and are illegal under international law. But when we speak about settlements in history, we just refer to small, very small dwellings where people lived, usually near to water, because that is one of the most important things uh, that people need in their life. So near to this spring, the Gihon Spring, there was a small settlement. And this is in today's Palestinian neighborhood Silwan, in that area. So this is the first area in Jerusalem where we know that people lived. And since the beginning of its existence, Jerusalem has been besieged 23 times. It has been attacked 52 times. And it has been captured and recaptured by different armies 44 times. And in all those times, it has had 11 different names that were recorded in documents and also on coins and milestones, 11 different names that we will talk about in this podcast today. The earliest mention of the name Jerusalem comes from the Middle Bronze Age, which is about 1900 years before Christ, 19th century before Christ. And it was mentioned in the Egyptian execration texts. Now, that is already an interesting story on its own. The Egyptians, they used to put a curse on enemies by making figurines or jars or small statues of pottery. And they would write the names of an enemy city on it and then smash it during a ritual. And in this way, put a spell on the enemy city. So they found such smashed pottery with the name of a city called Rusalim. And most scholars agree that this must refer to the city that we now know as Jerusalem. And then about 400 years later, in the 14th century before Christ, we see the name again appearing as Ur-Salim, and this time in the Amarna letters. Now, the Amarna letters, they are actually clay tablets, and they were written in cuneiform. And cuneiform is an old alphabet where they used a kind of wedge-shaped marks to press into the not-yet-dried-up clay. And it was not like the alphabet where each letter uh, is a sound, but the shapes they used to refer to words. Now, these clay tablets were found in Amarna. And Amarna was the capital city at that time of the pharaoh Akhenaten. And the Amarna letters, they were like um, a diplomatic correspondence. They were sent between the vassal kings of the Canaanite city-states in what is now Palestine 
and the Pharaoh. So the area that became known as Palestine in that time was called the land of Canaan or Canaan. In the Middle Bronze Age and in the Iron Age, it was called Canaan, but the Egyptians called it Rechenu. And in that area, in Canaan, there were independent city-states, and each of these city-states had trade connections with other city-states. And each one of them also had a small number of towns and villages around them that were kind of a satellite towns that would supply the city with agricultural produce, and then they would receive services and protection from the central city-state. And the ruler of one of those city-states, his name was Abdi Heba, he was sending clay tablets to the pharaoh and asking the pharaoh for help because there were the Abiru people, a kind of nomadic people, that were attacking neighboring towns, such as it's written Beit Lahmu, which is considered by scholars to be Bethlehem now. And in his letters, he writes the name Jerusalem as Uru Salim. And he is asking the Pharaoh for help. Here's a translation of a part of the Amarna letters that I want to read for you. Say to the Pharaoh, my Lord, message of Abdi Heba, your servant. I fall at the feet of my Lord seven times and seven times. Consider the entire affair. May the king know that all the lands are at peace with one another, but I am at war. May the king provide for his land. May the king provide for archers and send the archers against men that commit crimes against the king, my Lord. If this year there are archers, then the lands and the Hazanu the client kings, will belong to the king, my lord. But if there are no archers, then the king will have neither lands nor hazanu. Consider Uru Salimu, that it will not fall in the hands of the Abiru people. So the name Jerusalem derives from two words, Yeru and Shalim. Yeru is a Sumerian word, And when I say Sumerian, I am referring to the oldest known civilization in Mesopotamia, which is now southern Iraq. And the word Yeru means to found, to lay a cornerstone. And Shalim was the name of a Canaanite god. Shalim was the god of the dusk, the evening star. He was created by El, the supreme god of the Canaanite religion. And he was created together with the god of dawn, Shahar. So it was common in those times to name a city after the god that they worshipped. In the Bible, it is written as Yerushalem or Yerushalim. And it is mentioned for the first time in the Bible in the story of Abraham and King Melchizedek. And he was the king of Salem. It's written, Melki, from Malik, that means king. Sedek is from Sadiq, it means righteousness. So the story in the Bible is about a battle between four armies. They were Mesopotamian armies and five cities in the Jordan plain. The setting of the battle is in the desert area that is south of the Dead Sea, where Sodom and Gomorrah were located. Now, there was a king coming in from Mesopotamia, King Gedolaomer. He had made a coalition with other kings, and they came to subdue the king of Sodom, King Bera. And the king of Sodom had help from four other cities of the Jordan Plains. And in this attack, they took captive Lot. He was the cousin of Abraham. And when Abraham heard this, He followed the army and he went up to the north to the town of Dan and he defeated the army and he released his cousin Lot. And then he comes back and on his way back, as it's written in the Bible story, he meets the priest king of Salem, Melchizedek. 
And then Melchizedek, the king, brings out bread and wine and he blesses Abraham. And Abraham even shares a tenth of the plunder with him. Then he meets also King Bera, the king of Sodom. And King Bera offers Abraham also to keep the plunder. But Abraham refuses that. He says, I don't want later people to say that you made me rich. So he returns all the plunder that was taken from Sodom and he just takes back his cousin Lot. So these are the first mentions of Jerusalem. Ur Salim, Salim, Yeru Shalim, Salem. And the historian Josephus, he was a Jewish historian who wrote in Rome, he wrote in his book Antiquities that Salem was renamed Jerusalem or Jerusalem after this time, after Melchizedek's time. Now in the Bible book of Judges and Chronicles, there's also the mention of the name Jebus. And the people who lived in Jebus were called Jebusites. And then in the book of Samuel, it says that King David, when he was reigning still from Hebron, that he went and conquered Jebus from the Jebusites. And a famous Jebusite was called Arauna. And Arauna offered David a threshing floor on the hilltop. A threshing floor was a place where they used to have animals trample over the grains so that the chaff would separate from the grains. And King David refuses to accept it for free and he bought it from him. Now the name Yebus comes from the word to trample down. It literally means the trodden underfoot or the down tramplers. And we read again about this threshing floor later in the Bible when an angel comes to strike down the Israelites to punish them and to punish David for their sins. He comes during three days and he strikes down a lot of people and then he reaches Jerusalem and he reaches the threshing floor and then God told the angel to stop. So that's when we read about Yebus, the Yebusites, the threshing floor of Arauna. And then according to the Bible, the Jebusite threshold on the hill is the location where David's son Solomon later built the temple. Other mentions of Jerusalem are in the book of Chronicles and Samuel, where we read about David that he captures the stronghold of Zion. And that is where the word Zion comes from. It was a Semitic word, Sion, which means a stronghold or a fortress. So when in the Bible stories it's written that King David came and he captured the stronghold, the fortress, he captured Zion, that is where the name Zion comes from, in the Mount Zion. Now after, according to the Bible, King David conquered Jebus from the Jebusites, he took up residence in the fortress and he called it the city of David. Now, this is the current day area of Silwan. And this is where currently a lot of archaeologists are doing excavations in order to find remains of that time. And they are definitely using and also abusing the search for these archaeological findings to take over parts of Silwan, a Palestinian neighborhood. And they are making it into a tourist attraction, a tourist area, on the expense of the population that lives there right now. That is happening in Silwan that is now called the City of David, referring back to a history of about 1,000 years before Christ, 3,000 years ago. This area, David's city, is also known as Ophel, and that means the fortified hill or the risen area. And this is the area between Silwan and the Haram al-Sharif. So there are some other names after Ursalim and Jerusalem. We had Yebus, the city of David, Zion, Ophel. The city of Jerusalem has been mentioned by prophets and writers in history as the beautiful city, the holy city, 
the city of peace, the city of justice, the faithful city, and also just as the city. So it has many names. Now, when the Greeks came in, and we're talking about around 300 before Christ, they started to name Jerusalem Hierosolima or Hierusalem. Hieros in Greek is holy. So they called it the Holy Salem. So there's yet another name that was used in history for Jerusalem. Many Jewish scholars would make the connection between the words Salem and Shalom. And Shalom means peace. So they'd call it the city of peace. Now, a completely new name was given to the city by Emperor Hadrian in the Roman time. Emperor Hadrian had to deal with an uprising of the Jewish people. Uh, there was a revolt under the leadership of a man called Bar Kokhba, who was thought by many people at that time to be the Messiah. And this revolt took place in 135 after Christ. And when Hadrian had put down this revolt, he wanted to change the city completely into a Roman city. And he also changed its name and called it Alia Capitolina. Now, Alia was the second name of Hadrian, and Capitolina referred to the three patron gods on the Roman Capitol Hill, Jupiter, Juno, and Minerva. And today's city planning of Jerusalem is still based on the Roman infrastructure that was put in place during this time, the time of Alia Capitolina. We see when we enter from Damascus Gate, the Cardo and Decumanum, the two main roads that were laid out in the city in a typical Roman style, very organized, very planned, and there are still remains of the street and of the columns of these main roads. During the time that followed, the Byzantine time, the city was still known as Alia, and we are talking about the 5th, 6th, 7th century after Christ. All the time it was known as Alia. And then in 638, when the Muslims entered into Jerusalem, they knew it as Alia. And they Arabized it and called it Ilia. And if we look at coins from the 7th century, we can see the words Philistine and Ilia engraved on the coins. They also found milestones on the road indicating the direction towards Ilia. They were erected in the time of Abdel Malik bin Marwan. He's the one who built the Aqsa Mosque. And in those times, milestones were put in place on the roads leading towards the city, and they all referred to it as Ilia. Now, the name Beit al maqdas is first used in 545 AD, in the 6th century, by an Arab poet called Imru al Qais. And he refers in his poem to a Christian priest, and he refers to him as al maqdasi that he is from Beit al maqdas the house of holiness. And this name, Beit al maqdas is then used in different texts. Sometimes it refers only to the Aqsa Mosque, sometimes to the whole area around the mosque, and sometimes even to the lands around the whole area, the whole region, meaning the holy land. We see that the Caliph Abu Bakr, who asked for support from the general Khalid ibn al-Wali to come from Iraq to send reinforcements, also uses Art al maqdas to ask him to come to the Holy Land. The first real inscription of the word Beit al maqdas was found in a village in a town called Nuba near Hebron. There was a stone there set up around 660 after Christ, clarifying that the mosque in the town, the Omar Mosque, was an endowment for Beit al maqdas meaning that they had to pay tribute to support Beit al maqdas and to support the mosque in Jerusalem. It actually refers to Sakhrat Beit al maqdas which means the stone in the Al-Aqsa Mosque area. So it changed from Ilia to Beit al maqdas somewhere in the Fatimid period, in the 7th, 8th century. And then it started to be shortened from al maqdas using the root letters 
QDS, Quds, it's changed into Al Quds, and that's where Al Quds comes from, from Beit Al Maqdis, the holy house, to Al Quds. We see that the first one to mention Al Quds to describe Jerusalem is a historian called Al Waqidi, and he writes about how Omar ibn al Khattab divided the land after he conquered it, and he gives the land of Palestine and the land of Al Quds to Yazid ibn Abu Sufyan. And the first time that the name Al Quds is then found on a coin is in 832 by the Abbasid Caliph Al Ma'amun. He spent a lot of time and money to restore the city and especially to restore the Aqsa Mosque after it had been hit by an earthquake. And these coins are the first ones that do not have Ilya on them, but Al Quds. So we're talking about the 9th century. And it's since this time that the name Al Quds became the most used name by the local people to refer to Jerusalem. There was a traveler from Persia, he's very famous, and his name was Nasir Khusrau. He wrote a book about his travels. And when he reached Jerusalem, he was surprised that the people there did not call their city Beit al muqdis because that's how he knew it. That's how the people in Persia knew it. But that the people who were living in the city were calling it Al-Quds. And until today... The Palestinian population, which is the majority of the people living in the old city, call it Al-Quds. So we've been through a lot of names. Rusalim, Urusalim, Urusalimu, Jerusalem, Hierosolima, Yebus, the city of David, Zion, Alia Capitolina, Alia, Ilia, Beit al maqdis and Al-Quds. Louisa, today we learned about the names of Jerusalem, but how do you say the word name in Arabic? Ism. And how do you say my name is Louisa? Anna is me Louisa. And how do you say his name is Hadi? Huwa is more Hadi. And how do you say the name of this city is Jerusalem? Hain Madina Ism Halkud. Ism. Ism. Ismi Hadi. Ismi Hadi. Ism Halouiza. Ism Halouiza. Hail Madina Ism Halkuds. Hail Madina Ism Halkud. Habibi. Shukran Louisa, Shukran Hadi. Next week, another new word in Arabic. You have been listening to Stories from Palestine podcast, a podcast focusing on Palestinian history and cultural heritage. You can find more information, photos and links on storiesfrompalestine.info. The website has a media player to listen to all the episodes, but you can also find Stories from Palestine on all the different podcast directories, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon. If you're listening to the podcast episodes and enjoying it, and you want to chip in, you can go to storiesfrompalestine.info and find the Kofi button. Thank you for listening, and I hope you will be back next week for a new episode of Stories from Palestine. <laughs>